Why do you continue to seek me out? You cannot find me if I do not will it. I am the night, and yet you know I am here. I see you, shivering as I cross the room. You twitch when I slip under your bed. You can feel me. Do you feel my breath on the nape of your neck? Do you notice my nails on your flesh? Do you meet my eyes in the dark of night? Yes, you know I'm here. I've always been here. Things were different when you were young. Your little eyes could see me then. You would scream and point at me, trying to hide behind the bars of your crib. You would continue to scream as your mother lifted you. It was only when she flipped the switch and brought light into your pathetic world that I would leave. But it was no matter, for she would leave. She always left, and I would come back. You learnt quickly. Balling wasn't going to drive me out. You decided to ignore me, to pretend I wasn't there. Even as my greasy hair hung down over your face, and my breath rattled in your ear, Still, you ignored me. You became very good at it. I tried, of course, to make myself noticed. Small things at first. A misplaced shoe. Toys rolling across the floor. An open window. But this was too easy for you to ignore. Too simple for you to explain. Do you remember Fluff? That putrid creature you adored so much? The one that mommy said ran away? I assure you it was no fit state to run when I was finished with it. Do you remember little Stacy, that precious child who shared her candy with you? You always paid attention to her. You never ignored her. I hated her. Pity about the accident. How unfortunate for an innocent child to fall victim to a rabid dog. How I laughed when I heard your mother say that. A rabid dog. She had no face left, you know. I got carried away. The taste of blood. The shrill screams in my ear. It overwhelmed me. But still, you ignored me. You became more withdrawn after that. Spending hours on your computer. Shut up in your room. It was great at first. We were closer than ever. You stayed up late, and I watched over your shoulder as you trawled the internet, researching how best to end your wretched life. You tried once, too, but the rope snapped. Do you remember? Well, I just couldn't let you off that easy. I couldn't let you skip out on me. I will decide when you go. Your life is mine to take only when I decide. So little has changed since then. Sure, you got a job, you moved out, but I followed. You still sit in front of that screen every night, whittling away your time, numbing your senses, so you can drift off without suffering through those moments in between consciousness and sleep. Those moments where you catch a glimpse of me shuffling across the room, where you see the glint of my eyes and sense the chill in the room, how I savor those moments. You have forgotten me, yet you know I'm here. You turn on the lights in your bravest of moments, searching for me. But when you dissipate the dark, I too go with it, for I am the dark. I am the dark of your soul. I will never leave, at least not alone. Oh, some night you will see me in all my horrific majesty, but I will be the last thing you see. You're standing at the top of an ancient wooden staircase, looking down at the darkness beneath. Shelf after shelf of dusty supplies and stacks of books line the basement walls. You remember your mother's words. Could you please go get me a hammer and some nails? This is nothing but a storage room. Nothing to be afraid of. But it's so dark. You hesitantly take a step downwards. Down the creepy old staircase. 
and the stairs creak loud enough to wake the dead. You continue down the stairs into the basement. One filthy window guards the wall past the staircase, and it attempts to illuminate the room, but the darkness in the basement is so thick, light can't seem to penetrate. You search for a switch, and you eventually find a string connected to the ceiling light, so you pull it and nothing happens. The room remains obscured by artificial night. You walk around in the darkness for a few minutes, and eventually, when your eyes have adjusted, you find an antique dollhouse resting on a table. You open it, and you see that it's frighteningly realistic. There is flowered wallpaper on the walls in the master bedroom, an opening refrigerator in the kitchen containing miniature food, and tiny cloth blankets on all the beds. There are even porcelain dolls with realistic faces. You soon realize the dolls are you and your mother, and the dollhouse is an exact replica of your house. You see a tiny hairy spider scuttling along the edge of the house, and you squish it with your hand, but then there are more spiders. You grab a can of bug poison from a shelf nearby and spray until all the spiders wither and die. Suddenly the dolls fall over and their porcelain faces crack. The air in the basement becomes much thicker and you can't breathe. You run back to the top of the stairs, gasping for breath, but the door is mysteriously locked. You bang on the door as hard as you can repeatedly, but it is no use. You wipe the sweat off your face, which happened to be mixed with blood. You feel yourself becoming tired and then numb. Finally, a shock runs through your body and you succumb to paralysis, falling down the stairs like a limp rag doll. You slowly open your eyes to find the lights on. You blink a few times, and yes, the lights are still on, shining brightly and intensely. You move your aching limbs and try to stand. It takes effort, but you manage. You stare at the table which once supported the dollhouse. The dollhouse has vanished. But even more intriguing, the long wooden box propped up against the wall to the left. You tentatively walk closer, shivering with each cold breath you take. And you realize what the box is. A coffin. A large wooden coffin engraved in gold letters, your mother's last name. Curiosity gets the better of you, and you move your fingers to the coffin, pushing the lid slightly to find that the coffin is empty. Suddenly, you hear a female voice behind you. It's okay, I found the hammer and nails. You turn around to see your mother with pale white skin and blue lips. But that's not what you notice first. A series of cracks run through her face, with blood dripping from the crack lines. Her gray eyes flash for a split second as she opens the coffin and pushes you inside it. Shutting the door behind you, you are trapped. The last thing you hear is the sound of a hammer pounding the nails into your coffin. There's a monster under my bed, Jimmy screamed, throwing himself between his startled parents. Mommy wrapped him up while Daddy offered assurances that monsters weren't real. Jimmy pleaded with him to go make sure, so he pulled himself up and plodded down the hall. All was well until they heard a loud thumping noise followed by silence. Jimmy's mother decided to check on her husband, leaving Jimmy alone in the dark. Jimmy heard the creaks of the floor and another loud thump, then silence. Jimmy lay there, hoping that his imagination was just running wild. He decided to go in and find out what was going on. Tiptoeing his way around the creaking floorboards, he peeked in through the keyhole to see his mother wiping the floor and his father leaned over the bed. Jimmy opened the door slowly. His mother hopped up, hiding her hands behind her back. Sorry, she said to him gently. 
Your father slipped on a toy and he tore your bed. He's sewing it back up and I'm just cleaning up. His dad finished and walked over to him. Why don't you sleep with us tonight, champ? He said as he picked him up. Jimmy fell asleep easily, safely tucked between his parents. Jimmy's parents seemed awed the next day. After dinner, they put him to bed without a word. He realized that his bed felt very lumpy and wondered if his father had re it incorrectly. He went to find his parents, but the door was locked. He banged on it, but eventually made his way back to his lumpy bed and fell asleep. He questioned his parents the next morning about the bed and the door, and his father sternly replied that he was too old to be afraid of monsters, and they would be locking him in his room at night until he had gotten over it. The night was cold, and sleep did not come quickly. Laying under his blanket, he noticed that even with the fan blowing, something was beginning to smell. He tried to ignore it, but ended up sleeping on the floor. He convinced his parents to check his bed the following morning, but they found no smell or strange lumps. For lying, his father locked Jimmy in his room for the day. Time passed slowly. By late afternoon, Jimmy was nauseous and hungry, made worse by the potent smell coming from his bed in the afternoon heat. Determined to find the smell, he cut open the line of stitching his father had sewn. There, surrounded by stuffing, were the decaying but recognizable bodies of his parents. He began to scream at the sight of their rotting skin. He kept screaming until a knock came on the door. Jimmy, are you okay? Came his mother's voice, then his father. Remember, Jimmy, there are no monsters under the bed. If you like what you heard, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you'd like to, you can follow me at Twitter. The handle is at Fuzzy Pantaloons, and I'll see you all next time.